Midweek update. Busy week in politics. I thought we'd take a moment and take some questions. And at the end of the of the show, we're going to unveil our state's person of the year. We have our every year we have a statesman event. Uh, this year's going to be March fifth at, uh, at the Farm Bureau. We're going to unveil the 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 award winner this year at the end of our midweek update. But I thought what I would do here is take some take some questions today. So if you have your computer out, you can uh, message me on Facebook. That's what I'm going to be watching here on my Facebook. Or you could DM any of the uh, DM, make a comment. We'll try to respond. You can text me 573-429-5770. Uh, we'll take your comments. I've, I've collected about a dozen this morning. We'll start going through them at the top. Uh, first one, uh, the third district congressional race. How do you handicap it? I handicap it like this. The district, Missouri mapper is just, he's just so good. Uh, he mapped out the primary votes in the district and it's kind of, Wentzville's kind of the tipping point. Um, east of Wentzville, you have, it's a St. Louis area. It's got a little bit of Jeffco, but Bill Washington kind of it kind of droops, goes under and picks up around Franklin County. Kind of scoops underneath Freedom Love in Franklin County, uh, and it, it goes into Jeffco. Uh, Senator Coleman announced, you know, she's not from there. Um, she's not from St. Charles County either. I mean, essentially, the St. Louis portion, <clears throat> the St. Louis part of the district is mostly your Wentzville foul, that northern part, kind of, a, I guess Kelton runs along 70, basically the north part of 70s in there. Um, I, I, You know, she's a talented politician, no question about it. Um, and since she's raised $200,000, uh, usually when they say that, it, what actually hits the bank, 70% of that, 75 sometimes. When your your initial projection, maybe you get closer to 80, but I've always found, you know, uh, trust the candidate when they say they've raised it, if you want to, but trust that report, right? The report's going to tell the tale. Um, but you know, if you bring in 75% of $200,000 in a week, that's very impressive, right? That's still a lot of money, uh, and, a, and a hell of a start. Uh, the, the issue I think, uh, these campaigns now have is if you run for Congress in a congr in the you know, congested primary, you're basically groveling to Washington for money, unless you're Bob under. Uh, Bob Bonder, the district lays better for him than it does for her. He's actually from St. Charles County or, or spent the most of his life there. Uh, I think he was an alderman in the city, in, in St. Louis County in one of those little towns, I think, uh, prior to. But he's lived in St. Charles County long enough. He's a St. Charles County guy. Um, I, I would, If I had to guess, his house probably isn't in the district, but he's from the county where if, if you're – if you're the two of them, you'd rather have the, the district lay like it lays for him than it does for her, I would say. Um, then, uh, uh, you know, I, so the, the two of them, I, I have to believe there's some rich guy in St. Louis right now watching Fox and News thinking, boy, I'd like to do that. Oh, it's only, it only cost me $2 million. Okay. I'll, I'll jump in and run. Um, those can be successful sometimes, sometimes not. Um, Bob can self fund. So if you're, if you're just kind of keeping score, I think Senator Coleman's probably a better politician if you want the truth. Um, overall, maybe in a primary, Bob's skills are more highlighted, but she's probably the overall more talented politician. The district lays better for him. And I mean, I've always told you this, and, and, and I, I get it, it's not fair, and folks don't always like it. But the fact is, he has a, uh, he has a brother that's not rich, he's wealthy. Uh, he could stroke the check for the whole dead gum thing. And it would be, you know, he wouldn't miss the money. I guess what I'm trying to say. So um, <clears throat> Bob Onder, I would say, has some advantages going in. Uh, you have the factor of what they're going to hit him with. I mean, you, both these politicians have probably things. Um, if somebody wanted to break out the attacks, they they could throw the attacks. Now, most, most of that stuff's hyperbole. Most of the rumors you hear are just that. There's bullshit. But in a campaign where everybody's going to be going all in, all out, um, to uh to stop to drop to to hit the other one you know they'll play for keeps and so who knows it's kind of unpredictability if i had to guess this race won't be defined by negative attacks it'll be defined on who worships donald trump more fully with their whole heart um and it'll be interesting i do look sometimes bob's bob's uh style and rhetoric it appeals to a lot of primary voters but it also kind of has a uh again you know where Cinder Coleman is very good on her messaging. Uh, she will, she loves those Washington people. I, I would think she would have a very an inside track on going to Washington and, and getting money because that's just kind of her folks. 
uh, Bob Onder has his own probably connections out there. But I just think if she walks into a room, I mean, if you're a Washington person, you know that she she's not just saying she loves you. She means it. Uh, where Cinder Onder, I mean, I, I, I think his card is going to be I can win this. So you should back me or stay out of it. Now, you go to the western side of the district, right? So the St. Louis candidates, if I had to guess, you, you know, if there's a there, – there, there probably won't be a Nick Shore. He said he's not going to run against Bob. And you respect that. You respect the loyalty. Uh, we'll see. I think if there was going to be another St. Louis candidate, a traditional elected official candidate, they'd have got in by now. Uh, if I was going – you know, I think what you'll see is the guy that doesn't – probably get some wealthy dude that doesn't even know when filing is, right? But he decides he wants to do this, and 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 some he will find a consultant to take his money, and they'll figure that out. I'd say that's much more likely to be from the St. Louis area part of the district. Then, then let's go west of Winsville to real Missouri. Your Missouri candidates over there, I I, I feel like on the start, assuming that, that Bob Onder – I mean, Bob is not a poor guy in his own right. Dude's got a plane, right? I mean, Bob Onder has his own cash, right? He can – he can fund a congressional race. His brother can fund a congressional race with the money in the cushions of his couch. Um, <clears throat> so I, I just I feel like coming out of the gate, Senator, I could you could make a case that Bob Andre has more positives in his favor coming out of the gate, but you can make a case that Mary Elizabeth Coleman is a very talented politician, and sometimes talent can make up for some natural disadvantages you'd have. In the race um west of winsville here's the problem 15 percent of the vote is west of winsville can anybody they've had a hard time getting somebody to, to run i mean everybody of course if you look at the way the district's drawn travis fitzwater very good state senator very good guy he, he's kind of got that brain that would you know would actually care and i'll just tell you if you're from um you, you if you're from central missouri you have the college, the state capital, Lincoln. Um, you you have resources that you need someone that cares. And, I mean, just the, the brass tacks of it is, I've never seen a St. Louis and care about anything outside 270. And for damn sure outside Winsville is like the – St. Louis people think Winsville is like log cabins and stuff. Um, the, it, it, it would be if you, if you lose this seat, Central Missouri will never get it back. Um, Travis Fitzwater was the was the guy that I mean just it made a lot of sense right he represents Winsville all the way over to literally other side of the river here uh, he would have been a he would have easily had a lot of the college folks Mizzou folks get behind him um, his father has name ID I mean look every every town everybody watching this you know who your mayor and your sheriff is right you just do that every town you know who the mayor is you know who the sheriff is. So I would say Travis has institutionally and it, uh, had, a, had a great advantage with his dad's name ID in Cole County, which I would say Cole County is probably the second biggest pot of votes outside St. Charles County. And it, it, Ron Fitzwater has done an amazing job as mayor, universally liked. So um, I would think that'd be a big advantage, uh, but he, I, it, it looks like he's passing on it. I would have think if he was going to get any, we got in. So then it comes down to Caleb Browden. I've always said if Caleb Browden wanted to be a congressman, he would have just drawn his own district last time I've been a congressman, right? The seat was a seat was open. Caleb could have drawn that however he wanted to. Uh, he chose not to. He chose to cut Boone County in half. <clears throat> now, do I think Caleb could win this district? Absolutely. I absolutely do. Do I think uh, – I wonder if Caleb really – I mean, people don't – you know, the, the fights and stuff and all that, over time, that wears on you, right? He has fought, he has pulled the hardest leadership plow ever in the state Senate. Uh, I would even put the Civil War guys up uh, up against uh, Caleb. Uh, he has pulled the plow very diligently. And he's probably, I always just wonder if he's not just, usually people, if you look, Kelton, very seldom the legislative leaders go on and run statewide because they're just kind of tired. I mean, they've just, they've spent, they have to pour so much of their life into these jobs that they're just worn, worn, worn out. And I wondered if he was running for secretary of state. He seems to be doing that with gusto. Um, I would say it would take something out of the ordinary to get him to run for Congress. But if he did, Caleb Rodden would be the favorite. He would just jump in. And I, I would say have, uh, I would say he, with the money he could put together with the district geography, if he's the only one, if he's the only person from over in this part of the district, he, he would be, he would start off as the favorite. Um, minus that. Now let's talk about some other Taylor Burks. 
ran a hell of a race. Former Boone County clerk ran a hell of a race for Congress. Just the district. I mean, they just I, honestly they just cut him up so bad he couldn't. He didn't have much of a shot. Um, I think Taylor Burks has played this incredibly smart. If Taylor Burks would have jumped out and said, I'm running, it would have ruffled the feathers. What, what you got to have, if you're on the Western side, you will not have to spend as much money. The media, the media market's far more expensive in St. Louis. But if you're not really worried about that, if you just want to coalesce the Western part of the district, it's much cheaper, but it's more relationship based. No one in St. Charles knows anybody, right? You, it's, the, the other cul-de-sac might as well be two planets away. You just the, the culture of a suburb is you just don't really know anybody because it's transient. You move in, you move out. You know, one 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 Prius is parked at the end of the cul-de-sac, then another one is. It's just kind of the same, uh, the same miserable existence they live over there. Um, but the, in reality, if you're over here, it's relationship based. If if Taylor Burks would have jumped in and said, "I'm running," which I think he wants to, I think he's got a passion to do this. Veteran, a lot of good, raised a good chunk of money, a lot of positives to Taylor Burks as a candidate. And, and, and the other part is the savviness. So if he would have tried to move in and kind of ticked off Travis Fitzwater and Ron Fitzwater, well, that wouldn't be good. But he's been extremely gentlemanly and statesmanlike how he's handled it. If he had jumped in, now Caleb Brown's not the type that, you know. But, yeah, I think Caleb appreciates that Taylor's giving him time to, to look at it. Taylor has a the Hallsville House seat is open, so he could run for the state house. And he's been very savvy in how to handle this. You you do relationships really matter. So Taylor's out there. And the name that's gaining a lot of traction is Locke Thompson. Locke Thompson was in Washington last week. Locke Thompson, the Cole County prosecutor, uh, very good politician, really good guy, right? Now, it's very hard to go from county office fundraising to congressional fundraising. Will Locke really want to settle? Locke has a young child, beautiful, beautiful baby. Will he want to sit in a room making phone calls, begging for money all day. Uh, you know, it, it, and then if you're, if you're Locke Thompson, being the Cole County prosecutor is a dope gig, right? I mean, prosecutor is a, is a big, important job. You are widely known. Generally, everybody supports the work you do. Um, but you get to go home every night to that, to Amanda and that beautiful baby. Uh, people, I get it. Everybody dogs Congress. I totally understand. But that Southwest flight back and forth every week sucks. It is not a glamorous lifestyle if you're in if you're in Congress. Now maybe you're independently wealthy and you can. DC is expensive, <clears throat> and it it it's that life is a grind. It is an absolute grind, and I just don't know that um, I I just don't know that he'll want to do it. Now the 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 wild card here is Blaine Luktemeyer. Do I think Blaine has forgotten the what was it the 08 race against Bob Onder? No, I don't think Blaine Luke DeMar has forgotten anything about that. Do I think Blaine Luke DeMar has forgiven much about that? No, I don't think Blaine Luke DeMar has forgiven anything about that. So when it when it boils straight down, uh, I think Blaine Luke DeMar, now, I don't know this. It would shock me if he didn't want it to say to say a central Missouri seat. It would shock me if he didn't, he wasn't helpful. If he respected and liked the central Missouri candidate, in a race against former Senator Onder <clears throat> and former congressional candidate Onder, it would shock me if Blaine Luke Tamara didn't help on some level, right? <clears throat> now, what that help looks like, I don't know. You talk about a guy that could write the check for the campaign. Blaine Luke Tamara has been very successful in banking. He could write his check uh, to, to help whoever he wanted. Plus, he's got like $2 million in, uh, in money that he's raised. So uh, it would surprise me if Blaine didn't as we get closer, didn't sit down and say, we're going to figure this out. We're back in one guy and him come in and commit some of his resources, uh, his leftover campaign resources to that effort. Um, so anyhow, I, it, that's how I view it right now. I view it as uh, the St. Louis. I think you'll see one more St. Louis person jump in. Um, then I think you'll see, um, I think you'll see the central Missouri get behind a candidate and then it'll be your Missouri versus Missouri. Uh, uh, and look, I, it, the truth of the matter is, yeah, if I were, if I were in St. Charles, I'd vote for the St. Louisan. If I were in Mocaine, I would not vote for the person who doesn't know where Mocaine is and probably won't be able to find Montauk County on a map three years from now. Uh, that's just the truth. Um, you could, I mean, honestly, Congress sucks. They don't, that's why this national groups is so bizarre to me. Why would you let national people put out your statements? 
if you're a Missouri senator, that's bizarre. But you know, they don't have a border. They can't pass a budget. I, 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 the votes up there to me don't make any difference. Any, but what does make a difference? How much money can you bring home? That's the only way. Any of everybody in Congress, the only thing that they've done to help anybody, anything, whether you're Republican, Democrat, the only thing that's mattered is how much money can they bring home. You're paying the taxes. Really, your children are, are being mortgaged to China to borrow money to spend. We should get our share. If you want to cut spending, great. But they never do that. They don't really do anything. But they do spend a lot of money. And whoever, that's why Roy Blunt is such a legend and Kit Bond. He, he brought our money back home. And that's the truth. So if you want to, all the rhetoric about the stuff they're going to do, they're staying up to Joe Biden. Joe Biden, I mean, let's be honest. Joe Biden will never know who wins this election. He'll never meet them. He'll never care. He'll never, it will not phase his life at all. Maybe 20 years from maybe, well, in Jason Smith's case, five years, you know, you'd be a chairman of some big committee, which I think matters. But really what matters is do you bring home money? And all the else is just bullshit. Um, so which one can do that? Uh, you know, I don't know. I think we have to see which one, you know, I think this, and, and where will you bring it home to? If if the Central Missouri candidate says, boy, he's really going to dig in and help O'Fallon, I'm going to be like, <clears throat> and if the person from St. Louis says, oh, you know, we really care about Russellville and what's going on there, I'll be like, <clears throat> uh, your, your congressman from St. Louis will go to California, the state, more than they ever go to California, the town, except Burger Smokehouse, which is great, by the way. Uh, if you haven't had lunch yet, go Burger Smokehouse in California. That buffet, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm a qualified man to tell you buffets, burgers, beautiful. Um, but I'll thank my buddy Kyle or in Nixa. Give me this Stein. Like it's Michelob. You don't see a lot of Michelob Stein. Did you know Michelob, Kelton? It was Gussie Bush's favorite beer. It's also my favorite beer. No kidding. Not the ultra stuff. Actual Michelob. No, I do like Michelob Ultra. Oh God. He's from Boone County. Um, next question here about judges. Uh, I don't think the governor will get another Supreme court pick. Um, I, I think he's very proud. The state of the judiciary, it may be going right now, actually. Uh, I think that um, if you if you break it down, uh, the governor, the process to become a judge, you essentially, what if you're in like a, a, a non-Missouri plan county and there's a judgeship that's opened, I, the, the, the central committee usually votes and makes a recommendation. It, it, it holds weight. <clears throat> it mostly depends on the members of that central committee matter. Then you go look, see who's who's active in politics by active. I mean, writing checks um, and see if they'll call the governor who makes the decision. You talk to your state rep and your state senator and you ask them to call the governor. Um, any you know, Anybody that has influence, you can put a word in, you do. And then there's a process. You'll apply. Evan Rodriguez, who's so smart. My God. I mean, Evan is, is like, you know, here is like your normal government lawyer smart here is like your smart private sector lawyer and then like here's evan i mean evan is just smart um he's he just, he just smart so you'll get to talk to him which would be good for you if you're a lawyer you want to be a judge finding out how to talk to evan that's your move uh he has given them their great advice and i think that the judgeships are are something that he'll never really be mentioned for but but the reshaping of the judiciary <clears throat> and doing it with quality people that are going to be there for a long time. I, I think this governor has been the most impactful in the judiciary. Nixon was too. Nixon really cared. This is, I don't think the governor Parson took office planning on being this influential in the judiciary. And I think, you know, governor Nixon absolutely did. And I think it's kind of weird. I think they've done a hell of a job, both of them from different angles. Right. I, I think Mike Parsons not being a lawyer has allowed some other lawyers to have some, uh, I don't say outsized influence, but some influence, it's been a good thing. Um, so you, that's how, if you're in the Missouri plan, you go see the commissioners. Uh, you go, you get, you, you go meet all six commissioners uh, and the chief justice. They're usually very kind. Of, if you'll come to work, their town, they're usually pretty kind of like someone like Tim Drury's a busy dude. Right. But if you take this job, you kind of know what's in it and you, what's in it is you do, you generally make yourself available for 15, 20 minutes to meet with a prospective judicial candidate. <laughs> In the cities, they have their own little town. St. Louis has like little township uh, circuit groups and they make recommendations and somebody picks, the governor picks one. Then if you get the, get on the slate, it's very hard. If you get on the slate, uh, then, you know, you go get interviewed. Usually if it's for a big enough judgeship by the governor 
and uh, you 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 make your best case. And that's how you, I'll tell you how good Evan is. There was a judgeship back in Butler County, right? And Casey Proctor, war hero, the prosecuting attorney, was up against uh, you know, kind of swarmy, lawyery type, you know, back of the phone book, uh, just not, you know, the kind of the guy I'd be make fun of. And and but he 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 made a good good interview, right? And so Evan sits down, picks uh, Casey Proctor. And so funny, you know what happened today, Kelton? What happened? Today? Joe Blanton, who is one of the top lawyers in all Scott County. I mean, Joe Blanton's a legit dude. Files a malpractice case against the guy that that Evan did not pick to be the judge. And guess who heard the case yesterday? Who? The guy, Kel, the guy Evan did pick to be the judge. So you want to know who's picking smart? I mean, uh, Evan knew what he was doing there. He's a smart guy. Um, the FRA. Okay, talk a little FRA. Here's the deal. Uh, it's a tax hospitals put on themselves. Kit Bond got the greatest leverage. They still try to take it away, actually, because Kit Bond gets so much more money back from the federal government on our FRA. It's such a good deal. Roy Blunt had to fight for it. Uh, Eric Schmidt will have to fight for it. Usually, you know, you very seldom get two senators that really care about the state at the same time. Um, so it'll probably be Eric Schmidt's job to fight for this. Um but it's a big deal. Your hospital, if you're in St. Louis, Barnes will stay open. If you're in Farmington, your hospital will close without the FRA. If you're in Popper Bluff, it will close. If you're in West Plains, it will close. Your hospital will close without the FRA. So it's not something to screw with. So I had Denny Hoskins in here. Look, Denny, as you know, reasonable dude. You sit down and talk to Denny, reasonable, reasonable guy. Uh, he doesn't want them to fund Planned Parenthood. And the argument is, while there's no abortions in Missouri, if you if you fund them and they take that money they make off of regular uh, female health care that I don't know and don't want to speculate on what you're even supposed to call it, um, then they could take that money and pay their overhead and do that kind of stuff. And over time, it makes uh, for a bad uh, it, it it it's uh, it's a negative on um it helps them fund abortions, what they're essentially saying. So, you know, I'm not uh, an expert in healthcare finance, but I see their point. Um, you just, it, but so right now, Lincoln Huff and the governor's office really sat down and said, okay, we want to eliminate funding them. There was a big fight last year. I think uh, Governor Kehoe, when he was in the chair, ruled the point of order, ruled the amendment out of order. Um, to change it, but it's something you really don't monkey with. I, I saw Cinder Routon say it's not ready for prime time, but I mean, it's the FRA. It's essentially the same one from a few years ago, right? It's not, it, it, the, the he might've meant the Senate isn't ready because <clears throat> the bill is not a complicated thing. You just take last year, five years ago, right? You change the dates and you, you know, it's kind of is what it is. Uh, so you'll see some folks that want to put this abortion language on there. Now the federal government, you apply for a waiver. And, and here's Susan Klein's point. And I, I've always thought this carried some merit. So you put this on, you ask for the waiver from the federal government, which they should have done probably in the meantime. And if they give you the waiver to put that language in, then I don't think anybody cares. But if you didn't do that, now I wonder why the government, and maybe they have, there, there may be more of the story than I know, hasn't asked for the waiver. They probably have. The Biden administration probably is not out to help a red state put anti-abortion language into a major federal program. I just don't know why they would be willing to help you do that, right? Now, if you'd have got the, the smart move would have been after this fight was over last time, ask the Trump administration and get a precedent of approval, and that might have held more ground. And maybe they did. I'm not an expert in this, but right now, uh, I actually made some phone calls myself. Currently, I did a little research, Kelton. I actually didn't do research, but um. I did some research and I found out, Kelton, do you know how many dollars the state of Missouri paid Planned Parenthood last year? Take a wild guess. And that's multiple choice. $5 million? I'm going to go with no. $10 million? Also no. $1 million? No. How about $0 million? That sounds about right. So, so they've done a, you know, it, look, good job. This is relative. I don't need your text and stuff. Uh, if you wanted to see abortion eliminated, then, you know, they did. They took care of it. Uh, they don't. Not only is there no abortions. Uh, and I agree. You got to text him. Pat. Uh, 
Um, Pat uh, Thomas for Congress. She would be the best member of Congress you could possibly have. Uh, there, I mean, honestly, if Pat files, everybody else should quit. Pat would be the best. Um, but uh, but but seriously, they they said we want to eliminate even not even abortions. We want to eliminate even funding the people that do the abortions in other states. So they did. They got it done. And so the problem, I think. In all honesty, I think there's a group of senators who want to give Caleb Browden hell over anything. They don't. It doesn't matter what what time they go into session. They got a beef with, and and I, honestly, I'll be I'll just be candid. I I have some understanding of why Caleb does what he does, but now, you you do open yourself up for criticism. It's like the day it was snowed, right? And they're complaining we're not getting stuff done. Well, they canceled session the night before, and if it didn't snow, they would have looked bad, right? Like a school superintendent. I mean, if they cancel school the night before, there's no snow. Be like, what the hell did you cancel school, right? But it did snow. It was a smart move. He did the right thing. Uh, but that's the kind of thing that if you have people who are just dying to criticize, thirsty for criticizing you, that was one. Now, now this week, they haven't really, you know, done anything. And I, I think yesterday, oh, no, I got another question here about, um, oh, uh, the protesting. I, I, I don't know why they didn't do anything Monday. Uh, oh, they did that as SCR, but I don't think that it really does anything. Um, it basically tells Desi, we're not happy with you, which if Desi doesn't already know, then they have their head further in the sand than I would have thought. Um, yesterday they did, uh, all the Israeli guy gave a speech and so the Palestinians protested like all hell, it was a big throwdown. Uh, so I think honestly, I do believe they didn't want people at the Capitol because some, I mean, look, this stuff can get out of hand. And I think they had some credible concerns. And so I, I don't think they want to say that though, right? But in my opinion, and I don't know this, I've only heard things. There was a reason that tomorrow, yesterday afternoon, it wasn't the worst thing in the world for the committees to work, but not to have actual public sessions. Uh, they did have to kick a bunch of protesters out of the speech. I didn't hear the speech. I, I think you could probably guess what the speech was. Probably something like, um, Kelton, tell me if I'm wrong. It was we in Israel, we appreciate Missouri's support. Um, we're partners, and we all get along, right? I'm sure you're pretty close. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure it was a good speech, right? And, and a lot of a lot of folks are very passionately. I mean, the legislature very passionately pro Israel. Uh, the Democrats are like a, like every Democrat all around the country is in a box. I mean, they're they're more of their voters are now pro Palestine. Used to be Democrats were totally behind Israel. Republicans were lukewarm, but generally pro Israel. Especially in a in a fight with the with with the Arab community, Palestinians. Now the Democrats are becoming far more pro Palestinian, and you're seeing it. Even state legislators are having to think, "Oh, do I want to wear the Israeli pin? I don't know." Um, but you know that that'll all sort out in the wash. So anyhow, I think they didn't want people there yesterday for for some legitimate reasons. They have state of the judiciary today. Uh, I would be surprised if they don't go back in right and and probably go to IP reform. But the FRA, if, if the argument is going to be this, you have people that are going to, the, the minority of Republicans that hate leadership are going to complain about everything. They just are. I mean, they just are. Um, they're going to complain about this. They complained about this last time. They're, they're the, op you have to realize they view themselves as the opposition, right? To everyone. And everybody else is kind of like, well, you know, let's be reasonable here. And they're like, no, we're the opposition. We're here to oppose everything. So, <clears throat> I think it's a tough point to get around that you want an amendment that says you can't do what you're already not doing. That's a little tough, right? It it will come off like they're just complaining to complain. Now, I I see the point. I, I get it. Uh, I, 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 I thought Susan Klein's point was better. Best ask for the waiver. If we don't get it, then then it, it makes this amendment null. It voids it out. Um, I, I, I think it would have been and there's probably many reasons. I mean, the healthcare stuff is I wouldn't. Todd Richards is the right guy because that stuff's complicated, man. It's like the PSC. How you fund healthcare is a, is a nightmare to figure out. But um, we'll see. If I had to guess, they'll go to IP reform today. Uh, the Democrats finally will have something to to, to uh, oppose. Uh, I think it's uh, it's a tough move for them uh, to sit and, and just let the I. And but I'll tell you, you want my prediction, Kelton? I'll go right ahead. I think Rizzo's smart, and I think they won't PQ this. I think they'll make them do the concurrent jurisdiction. I'll give you a prediction, put my lawyer hat on. I'll be Evan Rodriguez Jr. for a second. 
I think the court will rule that violates your one man, one vote provision. I don't think it'll hold up to a court challenge. I think even if it, it might not be, I think you might have to, it's possible you'll have to vote on this. I think the realtors are going to nuke this. Uh, it'll be, it, it's going to, it's going to, IP reform is going to be the, the, the dog that caught the car, Kelton. And I'll tell you why. If the governor puts this on the ballot in August, then the abortion IP is on it. You got, he, I think you'll have to put that on in November, right? And if that abortion thing's on the ballot in November, you will lose seats in the suburbs. It will cost seats to put this on in this in, in November. So I, I I think what I think what they'll do, they'll pass an IP reform version. Rizzo's gonna gonna fight, but I think uh, the senator uh, with the of, of Italian ancestry will step back and say, okay, after a good long fight, you pass concurrent jurisdiction. Send that on through. Then if the realtors don't nuke it in August, the courts will nuke it, and you'll have this on in November, and you'll see fewer Republicans show up here in January. I, I think it's uh, I I think that and then here's the problem with a lot of things with the with when you've had a majority for this long, a super majority for now 15 years, a super majority and the governor's mansion. We had you had a Democrat there after Nixon for 17 months, the Obama supporter. But Parson's been there this is the sixth year. Super majorities and the governor, you've done every reasonable thing the party can do. The party's just out of stuff to do. That, that makes sense. I mean, you could do like silly, you know, Facebook stuff, but like to actually do real things, you're running out of things you've done, right? So anyhow, um, it, it'll be interesting to see you're kind of getting out of, you're, you're, you're running through all the common sense stuff and now you're into, you know, tough. So, um, so anyhow, let's get to the, the main heat here. February or March 5th, uh, we, our states, we, we, we cited this back in the fall, but there was one person that made more sense than anybody else to be the state's, the state's woman of the year. And that is Senator Cindy O'Loughlin. Cindy O'Loughlin will be our state's woman of the year. As, uh, as Kelton told me, this would be a seamless transition. Um, in the, yeah, not seamless at all, Kelton. Uh, but uh, Cindy O'Loughlin will be our state's woman of the year. It's going to be outstanding. March 5th at Farm Bureau. <clears throat> We're also, the Women's Legislative Conference does their scholarships. Their fundraising thing is going to be the same night. Uh, we're combining with them again. This is the one of the items. This is a Chris Jones autographed Chiefs helmet. Kel, look at this. It's legit. The opening bid was five. It went up to six. I think I don't know if Rudy Veed or Steve Butts, one of the two, uh, kicked it off. Right. I don't know who's ahead right now. But you can go on my Facebook page, Twitter feed, and you can bid ahead of the ahead of the event. Senator Cindy O'Loughlin, March fifth, our state's woman of the year this year. Uh, we'll be at Farm Bureau. We're very excited to honor her. She's a very uh, deserving person. We'll let Shelvina Common Sense come bid on some of these items. It's, we had a group. I think we get, did we hit 25,000 last year? Uh, somewhere in that. Yeah. It was, it, we, the best year they've had. We're going to do it again. We're, Gretchen was right on how we should do the auction. I was wrong. Gretchen was right. Um, so we're going to do it. We're going to do the auction Gretchen's way. Uh, and it'll probably be even more successful. Uh, I'll, uh, I, I've screwed that up enough. Right. So Kelton, last thing is your, the biggest gambling day of the year. I mean, not in Missouri. What the hell? The biggest gambling day of the year, Super Bowl. Is your illegal sports book open? Absolutely. Okay. The, it's chiefs at one and a half. I don't like that line. It's too close. Right. So no, the, it's uh, San Francisco one and a half, right? Is that the line? Yeah, San Francisco minus a point and a half. For your sports book, Kelton, I think we should set the line at Chiefs uh, Chiefs minus seven and a half. Well, that seems about fair. Because that, yeah, so at seven and a half, who are you picking? The Chiefs. At 14 and a half, who are you picking? The Chiefs. That is such a homer kiss ass. At 21 and a half, who are you picking? It would be close, but the Chiefs. I mean, so it's. You're the worst bookmaker ever. You're just, you're not a bookmaker. You're a homer that you would go so broke running a sports book. It's probably good they don't pass the law so you don't get jammed up because you'd be done. You just put every line on the home team. Um, okay. I, at, at a point and a half, I'm going to take the Chiefs. I actually am going to take the Chiefs legitimately. At seven and a half, I don't think I would. I think I, I think I would take the 49ers at seven and a half, but a point and a half to San Francisco or, or from San Francisco to the Chiefs. I'm taking Chiefs on that, and I really would take that bet and put that money down if you could in Missouri, assholes. Uh, 
but uh, I really do think that there, that's the move. And I do think that um, uh, it's seven and a half. I think I switch up, but I think I go San Francisco at seven and a half. You, you're still Chiefs at seven and a half? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I figured you're such a kiss ass. All right. Well, thank you guys. Um, bid on the items. We have a lot more cool stuff. March 5th, Cinder O'Laughlin, our stateswoman of the year. Going to be a good time. Thanks for uh, thanks for the questions. I probably was long-winded as usual. It's just our hillbilly way. Oh, Sunday on the show. United former U.S. Senator Roy Blunt had a great conversation with him. Great guy. I will see you uh, Sunday for the show.